Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, this is a live series that we're going through on Java, and this is lesson one. And when we're done with this series, we'll start the lesson two. When there's questions from the student, you will not be able to hear them, but I'll actually will be typing those in the screen. And so go ahead and read those, and that will be the context of what I'm answering. So thanks for listening, and let's get started. So we're back in Eclipse, and we're going to take a look at Hello World, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that to you. Now, what we did here, of course, let me, I'm going to go through the process again so you can see that, so I'll go ahead and delete this. So once again, I'm just going to right-click on the white space and go New and just choose Java Project, and then I'm going to give it my project name. So I'll just call, uh, once again, Hello, Hello Here. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to hit the Finish button, which is it below. and You can't see it, but just hit Finish, trust me. Okay, good. And then what I'm going to do is I, I've got uh, this hello here, and there's nothing in it right now. So I need to put something in it, so I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to go New, and I'm put my class in there. So just click on the class, and that's my Java class. And I'll just call it um, Hello uh, Me, for example. And you, you want to capitalize your um, class names, okay? That's standard in uh, programming classes. And, and I make the mistake sometimes not to because I do camel capping a lot. And notice that it has the same name as the class name. So you want to save your Java classes if you do them outside of Eclipse. You want to save them with the same name as the class name. So it created the class for me automatically. And so what you'll see lots of times in, in programs is that they don't really need this public uh, word here, so it's just class. So now here's the first part of our program, class. And what I want to do is I actually want to create... A, um, a, a little structure here that I'll always use for my program and I'm actually, I, since I use it so much I'm just going to copy it here okay and just paste it over. Alright so this is going to use this over and over again I'm going to explain this line to you again. You know and a lot of people scratch their heads on this and then they, a lot of people will teach it even Bucky just kind of you know goes up, doesn't even talk about it. He says oh you have to do this and then move on because it's always the same. So you'll always kind of put this line in here. The only difference you're going to notice is you had your parenthesis on the string and I have my uh, brackets on the args. So you had your brackets on the string, I have mine on the args. The bracket can go in front of the string or the brackets can go in front of the args, it doesn't matter. What the brackets represents, of course, are uh, like an array and it's going to bring information in through that array. That's your input array. So you have some statements here. You have public and static, which are what's called modifiers. And so public is a, like a scope, which means, you know, you heard of public, private, protected. We've talked about those in PHP. That's just a scope. Static is like, it's, it's, it's it's kind of be like a static variable in a sense, and, and uh, it just means it's going to be the same. And now void, you've seen that before, that's the return. And void means it's returning nothing because it's just going to run this method. There's not a return string in that. Now you can have methods inside of that return something, but void just means that it doesn't return anything. Next is main. Main is so important, you've got to have the name main. That is the most efficient, the easiest way that Java knows to tell people this is where the program starts. Okay, so every class that you create will have a main in it so you know where to start things up. So there you have it, public, static, void, main, string, and args. And this can be anything, like arguments or whatever you want to call that, but it must have the parenthesis in front of one of these. So there I've done it. Now I want to print something out to the console down here, right? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with the system out command. So let me go ahead and type that in real quick. Or you know what? I'm so lazy. I'm just going to copy it from my other program. So I'm going to copy that. We'll paste it into the new program. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to, there's a system that basically out, that's my console. And once again, I said, remember, this is one of those methods or functions that which are inside of Java. It knows what that is, it recognizes it, and it does what it's supposed to do. Because whatever you put inside this print line is going to be printed out to the console. So I put a string in there, which you know by the quote mark, right? And I must have my uh, semicolon there. And if I'm not, it's going to give me an error. So I'm, as I'm typing this, you notice you had an error all the way through until you finally finish it off, right? So... Eclipse is actively uh, error checking, even as you type your code in, which is a little bit annoying. It is a computer canvas that it outputs to, kind of like a clipboard. Okay, and that's exactly what it is. And if you're used to doing Flash, Flash like I am, there's something called a trace statement. And Flash has like a console in it that outputs to. Okay. So here we have right here, and we've done it. So all I have to do is, and I can save this, and just hit that green button and run it. So that's different than PHP. You don't have to point to the file. It knows what to do. I hope. And this Java application, hit OK. And there it is, Hello World, right in my console. Isn't that cool? Now, if I was to, to copy this again, do you remember how to do that? Remember hold my Alt-Control key at the same time and hit the down arrow key? 
I now have two of them, right? So if I print this, or if I run this, it should print out two hello worlds, right? And because this is an LN, print LN, it's going to do what? To give me a return, let's see if that happens. So let's run that. So let's see, I got two hello worlds, right? But what if I just do a print? Let's take the LN out and see what happens. They sure will. And that's the difference between print L. And there's a lot of different type print commands, and we'll be going through that. They're there, all lined up. Okay, so, and I just hit Control Z to get out of that, so I like that. Okay, good. There's your Hello World, and you know, it's the most important program you can write in Java because there is this structure that you're going to have to become familiar with. Uh, but you did some of that in PHP. You've seen classes in PHP, but this is, the structure is a little more tight. Everything in Java is going to be strict typed. And what does that mean? You're going to declare all your variables. In PHP, you could just declare a variable anywhere, right? Not in Java. You must declare all your variables at first. And, Absolutely, everything is a class. Let's move forward with more of this wonderful MIT lecture. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> okay, let me go to that. It's nice to have someone else write your lecture slides, let me tell you. So I'm going to write, once this go to the lecture notes, bring up the PDF. And we've been zipping along here, zippity-doo-da, zippity-day. See, my listeners will enjoy the song. And we went through this program. I think you understand this pretty well now? Let's move on, and uh, he's basically just explaining what I just explained. So we'll just keep going. And he talked about system printout, and we already did that. And here's a second program, and we just wrote a second program where you just you know put a print line under a print line. So we finished that. And now he's going to start talking about types. And you've seen this in, you've already seen this in a PHP, thank God. And so now it should start to get easier for you because you're going to see a lot of the stuff we've already talked about before. A boolean is true or false, okay? An integer is, you know, numbers that could be negative two as well, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, yeah, right. A double is basically just a decimal place when you have a number with decimal places, okay? And a string is, well, you've seen that before in PHP. It's just a text, and many times you denote your text with, with, uh, with, hello, with well, quotes, okay? So you've seen all that. I actually want to go into this just a little bit further, okay? So I'm going to bring another slide up so you can see something that's very important about this. Okay, what we did not talk about in the past, and I think one of the questions you should be asking is, why do we need these different variable types? I mean, is there a reason for that? Why can't, for example, why don't I use an integer instead of a boolean? I could use zero and one, right? And so one of the things we need to look at, of course, there's a number, number of character types, boolean, character, byte, short, integer, long, float, double, and we're pretty much just looking about half of these. But what's important here is the size and bits. Notice a boolean is only one bit, where an integer is 32 bits. So I could use an integer. I could use zero as what? False and one as true. But when I do that, I'm using more bits. I need more memory and, and more needs to be processed. So that slows my computer down. So st what strict typing does is when you declare something as a, cer as a certain variable, it actually allows you to limit the number of bits that you use. And when you're running millions of iterations, it can really save you a lot of time. So you always want to try to strict ta type down to the lowest order, right? To the least number of bits. And that will speed you up or help your program be more efficient. And that's when I said if you write programs efficiently, then they can be as fast as C++. And here's the first step, is making sure that you get your strict type correct. That you don't come along here and assign a long or a float or a double where you only need a Boolean, for example. Does it make sense? And that's the why of it all. And I think there's another slide here where they actually go into what they look like. And that's in another course. MIT course, you can pull that uh, information down as well. If you look at the references in my notes, I actually referenced four MIT courses. And you look at all those slides. And so we'll be going to these slides when we need them. But once again, showing the size and bits and actually the type numbers that uh, you, you could see what is that data for and how much information do I get. So there you have it, my little explanation of that. And uh, it's done very well by MIT. I didn't have to come with those slides. Isn't that great? I am so lazy today. You're going to go, man, this guy is really whacked out on me. I don't enjoy his lectures anymore. So there you have it. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to uh, the slides we were talking about. And he's just showing four here, but I showed you about eight and explained to you why you need those. And so let's move on down a little bit. Uh, we've talked about variables in, uh, in PHP. And basically, a variable is just something that holds something. And so he's showing you there's this variable. We're going to call it foo. And we're going to call it and declare it as a string. So when you declare something, you put it in front of it, and that's called strict typing. Okay, we used that term before. Mm -hmm. Strict typing. And so here's an example. He's going to come along here and declare a variable, string foo, and he's going to set it equal to a string. And you know it's a string because it's got quotes around it. And you've seen that done over and over again in PHP. 
Oh, so you can combine variables, and he's just showing you to declare a, ver a double, and he's going to give it this name right here and give it 3.14, the beginning of pi. He's going to create a Boolean, and a Boolean is what? Declared as what? True or false. So you've seen that before. And now he's going to run a little Hello World 3, and he's going to actually, in this Hello World 3, and you can run this program on your own time, and that is to just declare a string foo and, and print it out to the screen, and another one foo and print it out onto the screen, and both of those are strings. Okay. Notice that when he declared, he called this foo, and he let it equal to that, and it was the first number. And then he just took foo and just changed it by just putting another variable in it, you know, just giving it a, yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Do you want to do this now? I can, you know, may, maybe you should, because he'll just walk you through it. Are you there? Let's walk you through it. Let's go ahead and do it now. Okay. And then I'll show you what I have.